Yo, hello and welcome to, I would almost say to another episode, but this is the first one actually, this is the first podcast and something I wanted to start like many, many months ago, I tried already, but I failed horribly and yeah, this is another attempt and let's see how it goes, I guess. So in today's episode, the topics are PUBG Global Partners, PUBG Tournament Schedule, Massive layoffs after Microsoft Activision Blizzard merger and from number one in esports to number one in event management. Also talking about Activision Blizzard here. So let's roll the intro and see you guys in a minute. Before I begin, I want to say something about this format. Um, as I said, this is another attempt to make this work and I'm not an expert here. Yeah? I am I only know that I want to understand the esports scene and to want to dive into it. And I think the best way to do it is um, yeah, to, to actually start doing something. And that's why I started this podcast more or less. And yeah i'm gonna talk about results yeah tournament results match results upcoming tournaments yeah what i want to cover and also want to talk about one specific topic per episode and i hope in the future i'm gonna have some guests as well other people that can share their opinion and then it becomes way more interesting instead of me just uh yeah thinking about stuff and expressing what what kind of opinion i have right now i don't have an opinion i don't have the expertise yet but it will come over time so i hope you guys are patient with me and yeah let's dive into this thing so pubg global partners yeah you think um yeah or some some people no how do you how do you explain this so what does pubg global partners here yeah um these are basically the teams that don't have to qualify for the big tournaments yeah? so they are basically qualified already they still play all the tournaments but um in case they are in in a position where they would qualify um yeah their spot um doesn't steal away a qualification and the next team will basically get it i hope this makes sense um i think there were eight teams last year and this year um there are 10 teams now the 10 global partners are 17 Gaming, Face Clan, 4AM, Genji, Navi, Petricor Road, Sonics, Twisted Minds, Cerberus, and Day Trade Gaming. And when this got announced, I saw a lot of people complaining and making fun of some of the teams. Um, but I can't agree. Yeah, I, I was curious how this um, how the selection uh, was made, you know. And when I went to the PUBG website, PUBG Esports website, um, they explained it: twenty percent governance. Yeah, that means 
how well is the organization yeah how how well uh is the organization organization structured yeah how well is it run and how stable it is basically yeah so can you trust these guys basically yeah can you trust them and i think this is an important factor because um yeah when we look later on the tournament schedule this year is packed with so many tournaments more than last year more than the years before and it is stressful to participate in all of these tournaments the qualifiers the tournaments themselves to get on a plane to move into a certain country you know fly there and stay there hotel and everything and participate in a tournament it's not cheap it's not uh, easy and to do it over the entire year you must have some track record as a as a as an organization yeah that you are capable of doing this and that's why it's not all about how well the teams played from a fan perspective i can see it you know you always root for the for the best team and and for the yeah what is what is the favorite of the month basically yeah but um from a from a tournament organization point of view yeah you want stability you want something predictable basically yeah and i think this is this makes sense so the the other 20 percent are history yeah how well were the teams before you know how well did they perform are they are they are they a part of pubg esports for quite some time yeah genji comes to mind view is back there so even if they didn't perform that well in the last tournaments and before um i can see them rising again same goes for other teams and then it's 60 percent fandom yeah and i'm wondering how they how they how they track all of that yeah if they made a list and but uh it doesn't matter i have nothing i have nothing to complain about these teams and if you are not if you are on the outside yeah even as a fan as a team it doesn't really matter this this would make me more hungry you know like all right all these teams are qualified already we are not we didn't make the cut so now now we we have to show you know we have to show that we that we belong there you know so i would take this as fuel as as motivation you know instead of complaining or making fun of other teams especially as a fan but also as a as a team you know like there's no reason to be cynical or whatever and i mean 10 global partners is huge so there are on, only 14 slots left for the qualifiers yeah only 24 teams qualify and then they do that format i believe they did before like that they have like three brackets yeah and like eight eight teams per bracket and then you have like a versus b a versus c b versus c and so on then winners bracket losers bracket and so on and yeah then the final I think the format is pretty good and it makes a lot of sense. So let's take a look on the tournament schedule for 2024. Yeah, I think um, what stands out are the two big tournaments yeah, in September, the PNC, um, the PUBG Nations Cup, yeah, where you don't have organizations, where basically all the players join their country basically and represent that. Then you have in December the PGC, uh, the PUBG Global Championship, I believe. Yeah, in December 2024. This is the end of the year. Yeah, this is basically the biggest tournament, and here we have also the big prize money again, uh, where the pool is boosted by all the skin sales and all that stuff. Yeah, it will be it will be insane. It will be massive. But before that, we have also. PGS3 in May, PGS4 in June, PGS5 in October, and PGS6 in November. Yeah, so we have four PGS tournaments, PUBG Global Series tournaments this year, which is insane, yeah, which is a lot. I think last year we had two, this this year we have four. Price pool for each tournament, 300,000. It's a little bit less, I believe, than it was before, but... Um, on the other hand, you have um, more tournaments, which is uh, mind-boggling. Yeah? Then we have also the TBA. I don't really know what this one is. Um, it's in August. 
I was here. I didn't find much about it in the internet or when I searched for it, but perhaps I wasn't looking deep enough. Um, seems to be also just uh, something like PGS, yeah, like from the from the from the size, yeah. It's not it's not marked like PNC or PGC, but it will be also a tournament that is uh, that will be in August, basically. I will cover it for sure. So and then we have also the qualifiers for the PGS, yeah, the regional qualifiers, which may it starts on in March already, yeah. Then we will also have it probably in July and August, or in August and September. I don't know. So it's it's kind of huge. It's kind of huge, yeah. This this entire year is packed, starting from March to December, and um, I'm a little bit afraid, you know, that we will see a lot of stress. Yeah, the players will be under a lot of stress, and um, I think it will reflect uh, through the course of the year. So this is not easy. This is not an easy schedule. Um, this will be stressful, and there might be some drama involved due to this. Um, but what I can say with such a packed schedule, what it will probably do is, from a fan perspective, we will be yeah, flooded with highlights for sure, because if you have so much pro play, there will definitely be insane highlights again. And we don't know yet how the game will progress, like patch-wise and so on. There might be some interesting changes that will make it into the competitive scene as well, sooner or later. I'm pretty sure about it that we will see some patches over the course of the year, which um, yeah will reflect in crazy plays and crazy highlights as well. And I think we might see a lot of surprises as well, yeah, because the density yeah, of skill level in PUBG is kind of huge. Yeah, the skill cap is insane, yeah, compared to beginnings yeah like the the early years when it when when the tournament started what we have right now is absolutely mind-boggling if you are into this yeah it's it's it, it can't be compared to solo playing or ranked play or whatever what we see on tournaments this is uh, definitely another level and i'm excited to see some great plays and also some drama involved around the teams um there will be different seats as well yeah like for the for the tournaments we have like two from china we have three from korea two from europe middle east africa emea four from asia pacific and three americas um but this is basically it so nothing more to say about PUBG right now. Um, I guess we have to wait until something is happening. I'm looking forward to it. You guys know it. I talked a little bit on my YouTube channel about PUBG already. Um, I'm not a good player in it, but I like to watch the tournaments a lot. And I respect the skill level. And I'm really excited to see something happening there. Something something that is uh, that reflects... Uh, what I what I predict or whatever I I don't know I I'm I'm in for for an exciting time yeah like it it will be it will be fun it will be fun to watch and a lot of shuffling over the year and it will be interesting. All right, then I come to the next topic and that is massive layoffs after Microsoft Activision Blizzard merger. Yeah, thousand nine hundred developers. And I'm not sure if it's just developers, obviously, probably also other people, um, yeah, got basically fired after the merger. This happens all the time in, in, in business. Yeah, when two big companies merge together, obviously, you want to cut costs immediately. Um, that was, that was expected. Um, <laughs> And I think if you if you are one of these guys that um, that lost their job over this, don't be sad about it. Yeah, just move on and don't don't take it personally. Yeah, that has nothing to do with your with your abilities or capabilities of doing your job. Yeah, this is this is just a straight a business decision. And I know it sucks the gaming industry right now. Yeah. Um, Games are not produced in a way um, 
or let's say it let's say it that way um for me as a as a gamer i haven't seen games that really excite me you know the problem that i have for example with activision is uh, or activision blizzard here with the games is that most of the games are released unfinished basically and then they need like one or two years polishing until they become really playable and enjoyable and we don't see a finished game released anymore yeah? and it is all about um how do i say it um this i can i can probably merge directly into to the other topic as well i mean perhaps we have a good transition here um yeah it is all about event management basically yeah like imagine there are big concerts out there yeah? for music for example yeah you you go there and it's quite an event yeah but it's nothing compared to listening to the to the real audio with a good headphone yeah it's it's no comparison so depending on what you want you either want this yeah you want the excitement yeah the live show it gives you more emotions or whatever or you want to dive deep into into the into the audio you know you want to start dreaming you want to lose yourself there then obviously th these are two different things yeah and i think what is going on here a lot with um activision blizzard games releases seasons is that they don't really care about having having a great game it's all about jumping or moving from one event to another yeah season x starts here season next season starts here yeah diablo 2 season starts here diablo 3 season starts here diablo 4 season starts here oh there's another wow expansion or there's another another world of warcraft phase oh now we have another sod phase and oh here's overwatch 2 and now we release this one and then we have this one and yeah then you have massive hype on twitch obviously the game gets hyped and then funnily yeah <laughs> big surprise after like three months nobody plays it anymore and it needs massive patching because as i said the games are uh, released unfinished everybody participates in in the release you know is, is hype for whatever reason even if like someone that put, has more experience or someone that has seen this so many times things like yeah, okay hmm. probably in in three months probably in six months the game is playable should i should i even pre-order uh, probably not it's not worth it and yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of i don't want to say sad to see i can understand why it's happening obviously yeah i mean you want to you want to make your shareholders happy and having these massive events is also a big um, sales argument you know because if a lot of people want to participate in it yeah then obviously a lot of people buy the game but the problem that it still exists is if you do it too many times and you don't deliver on the product then people realize that they only buy a small kick you know like for like two weeks or whatever and i don't mind paying like 100 200 300 euro for a game or dollar or whatever it doesn't matter um at least from where i come from and that doesn't mean i'm i'm rich or whatever yeah, it's just it's just a priority thing um yeah other people buy expensive cameras uh, something i want to do too or travel the world something i want to do too or buy expensive cars something i want to do too but here in this case yeah i mean i don't care about the money the problem is what do you get out of it and there are a lot of free games out there that provide more enjoyable and high quality playtime than all these yeah events basically all these releases yeah so um i can see i played diablo 4 recently and like this is probably the first season season three and 
I can't complain like the other people complain. <laughs> Because for me, for the first time, I think, oh, okay, this goes quite smooth. I understand the game, and it's not that bad. But uh, still a little bit repetitive, yeah? You do the same thing, you start, you, you grind stuff, you grind gear, you grind experience, and people complain that it is too much micromanagement and so on, and that they can't brain AFK farm, but, um, yeah, I don't... For me, it's not hard enough, I think. Like, a game has to be a challenge. But yeah, that is something else. So, I said from number one in esports to number one in event management. Definitely number one in event management now. Esports, long time ago, abandoned. Yeah, we had StarCraft, we had WarCraft, but... They were they were basically the top of the world, yeah, in like the early two thousands, yeah, and even late two thousands, and right now, um, yeah, completely abandoned, more or less. Um, World of Warcraft esports, I don't know, was never really accessible. Yeah, only a small number of teams that participate in there. Um, very exclusive club, hard to get in there. Not really predictable. Then you have obviously race to world first, which is also um, yeah, almost impossible to get into, like from scratch. Almost impossible. Um, what else do we have? Hearthstone. Hearthstone. I think might be probably the only game that this. That, I don't know if there's still esports around it, but that might be the only game that is in an environment that started out in that and is still in there. You know, like in that. In that in that in that bubble, let's say it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we had um, Heroes of the Storm completely abandoned, and the way how it got abandoned, um, yeah, not very not very polite. Let's say it that way. Um, that was a big punch to the face to everybody who was involved there casters players teams um fans as well um yeah and i think it wouldn't it, there was not much uh, missing you know like um they had like 20000 views on twitch during tournaments and it was a pretty young game you know and I mean, what were you thinking that you that you compete with League of Legends or Dota that had like almost ten years under their belt? It takes some some time, yeah, to to develop a game and to polish it in a way that is fun to play and that it offers on a competitive side um, a lot of excitement. Yeah, it's it's not easy to figure out, and you need a lot of sample sizes to to understand your game, your your community, your your fan base. Your your pro players and so on, yeah. What what is? I mean, that is a science in itself to figure out that stuff, especially from a developer point of view. Then you had Overwatch, also a game, lot of potential, but um, now we have Overwatch Two, which was probably a complete disaster as well. I don't know if too early or. Can't really say about it because I never played Overwatch that much, but um yeah, this is this is from an esports point of view, Activision Blizzard is a complete failure. What they can do is event management. And this they do pretty well, I believe, but um is this what we need? Is this what we need in 2024? Is this Will this become even worse now with Microsoft? That is that is a big question. Yeah, everybody was was uh, angry with Bobby Kotick, and um, I was thinking. I mean, I was thinking. Yeah, what 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 comes next? You know, like people people like thought it's it's automatically that the next person or the next team that fills the shoes or the yeah will be better or whatever yeah like or better for for developers or better for for the players 
and just see what what you get yeah we are we are basically on stock market in a bull run right now yeah we will probably see rises to new all-time highs soon and that is the latest where the company's uh, gonna cut costs you know like massively I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not naive. I'm not naive. I, I already predicted this more or less that it won't become better. And yeah, now you see what what is happening. And yeah, once once um, they come up with new ideas, new games, and they see some something is sticking, you know, we are close uh, to finish development and so on. You know, big releases are ahead of us. Then they will hire new people again and everything, you know. But uh, right now, um, yeah, 1,900 people lost their job. Jobs, 1,900. That is that is a huge number. And as I said, the gaming industry right now is, is not as uh, sunshine as it was probably. Uh, and we don't see much innovation. But I don't lose hope. I think innovation is about to come. And... I think, um, yeah, the way how it is handled now with all the event management, it won't, it won't hold on for so much longer. It only, this is only for a certain niche, but I think um, we will see way, way higher quality games in the future. I'm not sure if AI will help with that, but um, it might, it could. In certain ways not just for competitive but also for other games you know like gaming is a is a white is a white industry and it might be it might be it might be helpful but here you have it also yeah with with a with a duality you know you always have like you know you see this a lot you know that there are like two two things made up like League or Dota, you know, for example, or Burger King or McDonald's and all that stuff, you know, or if Coca-Cola or Pepsi, you know, you have so much, so much duality there. But um, this is just distraction, you know, and in the, in the game develop like for Activision Blizzard, it's like, um, like three, three, um, how do you say it? like three camps basically yeah one other shareholders you know like that want to squeeze out more and more money then you have the developers who try to please the shareholders and so on you know or the leadership team then then you have the players on the other hand you know and the 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 devs they want also create something good a good experience for the players and the players want to have the best experience anyways you know and they are crying all the time, you know, but here you have three different camps, basically, and they all want something else, you know, and the devs are basically in between, you know, and they are the weakest link here. They are, they are supposed to be the strongest, they are doing all the hard work, but you see it also in, in, in like NBA teams or whatever, you know, or in football teams or doesn't matter. The coach is usually the first to go, you know, and the developers here are basically more or less like the coach, you know. And this is this is the harsh reality, basically. Yeah. So yeah. And this says also a lot about culture. Yeah, there was I think there was a time when when the culture was uh, like very very deaf friendly. Yeah. But this must have been like 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know when it happened, when it shifted, but um, perhaps, it was, perhaps it was always a tough business. I don't know. Perhaps back then it was just on a smaller scale and the stakes were not that high. And now it's all about big money, you know, and every decision um, impacts like the income of like millions if not billions of dollars and that's probably too much but then in the end the only thing you need to do is create a good product 
And I've said it already. The good product is there, yeah. But it only happens after nobody plays the game anymore. Diablo 3 right now is a good game. Even if people laugh about that statement. It was a good game. But it took like forever to, to get there. Yeah? Before the expansion came out, before Reapers of Soul came out, it was it was trash. Is it is it great now? Like the greatest of greatest? No, but it's definitely better than before. Like it increased a lot. And I expect the same with Diablo 4. That it will keep improving and probably in, I don't know, 12 months from now, it will be, it will definitely be my go-to action RPG. It probably is already, but um, I just started out in season three, so I can't really say. But will this event management ever change? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, that's a strategy, you know, to to just go from one season to another season to another season to another season and so on. But um, yeah, the game has to improve. Like every game, like it's the same with World of Warcraft. There's the same strategy, yeah? We go from one expansion to the next expansion to the next expansion and between expansions we have phases and so on, you know? So it's basically every time, yeah? You have to develop something on top of the other every time, yeah? Every few months. And I don't know. There are other games out there that that function in their environment, you know? That, that, that function in their in their space you know they don't need new content they are just they just work you know and it would it would be so much easier and also so much more productive to improve the game instead of forcing your developers to create something new out of nothing you have to create new content every three months and this makes also i mean this is also stressful. I can see this. This is very stressful. And I think this is also wasted resources in a big way. It is also wasted resources in a big way. Because you play the content and then for the next release, you create new content and the old content isn't played anymore. So it was, it was there. It was a good time, but nobody cares anymore. We move on. And this is bad game design, in my opinion. If all the resources that were used to create new seasons, new expansions, new phases, new whatever, to just improve the game as it is, I think we would be in a different universe right now when it comes to the reputation of Activision Blizzard or now Microsoft Activision Blizzard, I don't know how to call it, as a game publisher. Yeah, if it comes, for example, to raiding in World of Warcraft, you don't have to create a new raid for, for every for every phase or whatever, yeah. To move the story on, to force something, yeah, to 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 somehow force the story to develop. It would have been cooler anyways if the players had something to say with the story, yeah. If their decisions influence the outcome of the story, yeah. And the developers or the you know the publisher or whatever would have honored what happened in the world yeah what decisions the players made and base a story on that that would have been way more engaging you know but um, this is a different story um yeah you don't you don't need new content and new content yeah you could have just had a raid mode you know and make the bosses random make the environment random the boss rooms random make the abilities random and just bring out new, make it we on a weekly base, you know, that it switches all the time, whatever, and 
that would have been way more demanding you know and then we wouldn't have this oh yeah the, the guides are all over the internet so so raid leading itself is obsolete basically yeah all you need is watch a guide and play a role and blame everybody else that doesn't play uh up to his standards or whatever yeah <laughs> well back then raid leading was an art yeah it's... right now it's all about a lot about add-ons a lot about item level and a lot about copying on other strategies so people don't think about it anymore or they don't put their their brains to it but um, that doesn't matter. That is a different topic. So I think I made a point here and this is it already. I don't have more to add. This was pretty long, I guess. Um, and I hope it wasn't too boring. But yeah, this is it. I close it here and um, see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.